give thanks. Give thanks. Greetings. Greetings. Straight across the earth. Again, to the most high creator of nature, we do give thanks and praise. As usual, we like read and write and do our own thing. So, we are share them information here yeah, and our style approach. We send the St. Catherine Parish Court in and for Middlesex. St. Catherine, citation number SC 2023-TR-100-506. And I'm at one, two, three, four. Remember, we talk about the counts. I'm saying no driver's license, no certificate of fitness, no certificate of, what was that? Registration, no cert, no insurance. So they're not come with, they're not come with four charges. And all I can say is the Road Traffic Act 1938 stipulate who is required to be licensed. So the public passenger vehicle and all these things. Those are who are required to run in the commercial business out there. Someone such as I, which is outside that scope. It not apply to me, but never demonstrated in law, which naturally we don't have a problem doing. So the moment I not engage in that commercial activity, I need a license. But the drive is just the man where they're behind the wheel, a steer, the steer man behind the wheel. And when you talk about the motor vehicle or your automobile, then my one is a private motor car. Outside the classification of being a commercial motor cars and it's used exclusively for personal conveyance. It's as simple as that. Yeah, and because me the driver then I take full responsibility for the property. And the property is within my family because again I said my mom has never driven a car in her life, never have a driver's license in her life. You know what I mean? So when the car was acquired in her name, and at the time because of the level of knowledge, then everything was registered and all of that. But the moment we become unregistered, then that doesn't mean we're outside the law, we're just outside the agency's legal standards, alternatively used as rules or regulations. That's all it is. That means that we're outside the law. So now we get a chance to demonstrate these things in a simple way. Yeah, man. So I say administrative adjudication examiner, Miss K. Low. I can't figure out the last name. I will ask in that later. The administrative adjudicative clerk. That says uh, Mr. Dave or uh, Mr. D. Kelly. I don't know these people. And then Mr. Government of Jamaica Agency, Public Authority, Court Administrative Division. Public Service Commission, Police Service, Agent, Senior Sergeant A. Edwards, Agent, Constable A. Morgan, Plaintiff. So them I bring the claim. Them I bring the claim against Linton O'Neill Dallas. Legal fiction as surety. So them actually want to bring a claim against the estate, the surety. This is why I'm going to tell you people it has nothing to do with the paper money, those negotiable instruments you guys are, you know, concerned about. You know, it have everything to do with the birth registration form, that birth certificate, that sophisticated financial instrument, everything to do with that. 
And this is why when I was arrested and imprisoned and had to sign a recognizance bond to walk out of that imprisonment, demonstrates that uh, there is two entity on that document. There is a prisoner and there is a surety. And the beautiful police lady, beautiful police lady, said I must sign this in order to get out. You understand? And there's another contract where that is separate from the notice of recognizance. So all of these things are, you know, evidence of what we would call fraud so we not understand all of what go on. So because we not understand, we are saying, yeah, we are going to fraud this. However, Let's see what it is. So when we sell Linton O'Neill Dallas, it's, it's in all caps, and this is all they can deal with, that birth certificate entity. And the moment I not consent, it like a constitute fraud. But if we not document it, then who will know? If we not present it, then who will know? Now I said verification of police witness statement. Why I said that? Because on the 28th of July, I went to the court office in Spanish town. By that order, the judge or the administrative adjudication examiner to pick up what I call disclosure. For whatever reason, they didn't give me any disclosure on the 17th of May. So I had to wait on the 28th of July. Uh, whenever I request anything from these people, they act like they are dumb. You understand? So yeah, if, if a man like me, I mind I put it in writing and bring it forward. Again, verification of police witness statement. Government of Jamaica County of Middlesex. Before me personally appear, the surety who being first duly sworn and identified in accordance with the Constitution as amended 2011 deposed and say, a legal entity and surety name is defendant hearing. I have read, but do not understand the attached foregoing complaint, i.e. witness statement filed herein and each fact alleged therein is true and correct of my own personal knowledge. Hear that? And each fact alleged therein is true and correct of my own personal knowledge and respectfully presented. No? we Drop some signature right there, the surety signature. I mean, really, I think about using a quorum witness. Yeah. Yeah, man, because I have some proper people can drop as witness opposed to just the justice of the peace. And sometimes the justice of the peace, then, because some of them not really. As sharp as you know, any kind of attorney, then we, you know, be a bit reticent for to act when them have a public office where them can't be, you know, hesitant to do their public duty. Uh, that's where them have them little oath about. But I really would I like for drop some, maybe some quorum witness, some quorum witness. Come on, so I'll consider it. And then was a certification of service under penalty of perjury. I certify that a copy of the foregoing was provided by regular mail to the administrative adjudication examiner 
and the administrator but through the creative clerk associated with this matter at the location of the court. And a problem like is a notification to other locations like Chad. So another location. Yeah. And then basically, you know, process again. We sign and this are for the legal entity. Uh you can you know present yourself and you can be the authorized representative as an executor. And again, I share this document before, but I don't mind I repeat these things. Yeah, because our people never see nothing like this. Not even our courthouse never see this approach. And I say man free, man have a right to decide their own destiny, man have a right to self-identification, you know what I mean? Man have a right to self-determination. So an agency not supposed to impose itself upon the true and living man in the earth. And can do that with them agents and them employees, not with free people. So we say, General of David, Government of Jamaica, Public Authority, Public Service Commission, County of Middlesex. Before me, the undersigned Justice of the Peace, and the name is there. On this day, personally appear, known to me to be a credible person and lawful age who been by me first duly sworn or affirmed on his oath, the cause and say, I am the executor, and you have document certified fact to prove that to you. And beneficiary of the surety known as Linton and Neil Gallus. This is a secret where they must keep. They have an all capital registered organization with an identical sounding name as yours. You understand? The looks are different because your true name is in a one low case. You know what I mean? While what I'm really I do is fleece the juristic entity, which is where them so-called financial system functioning well. You know, so behind the scenes, you know, know about these things. You can't see these things. You understand? So when me say so I am the executor, I have the document for it, you know. And then my position now, I assert my position within this inferior administrative adjudication. So when I say I am the beneficiary, not beneficial owner, not, no, I'm just the beneficiary of that surety known as Linton and Neil Dallas. And we believe that the state administrative agents are in violation of the Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedom Constitutional Amendment, April 20, 2011. On appeal, an or, should I put or, inherent, common, and natural law rights, we believe the agency statutory legal standard, alternatively, call rules or regulations. Are an abridgment, abrogation, and infringement of our inherent dignity as man and woman along with my fundamental rights and freedom secure and guaranteed by the Constitutional Amendment of April 2011. And this is where we are stated. Uh, this are going on them quote on the record. Quote the county record. That say I'm not a public servant, nor am I a public employee. And any claim to the contrary must be proven by payroll records and my alleged public servant title and sworn under penalty of perjury and full commercial liability. I do not operate 
or hire or reward business using the highways, roads, or streets for any city, county, or state using a commercial vehicle. So the moment we now use a commercial vehicle, there's no regulation within a legal standard or your statutes, your statutes to dictate terms to a, a man outside of your commercial venue. This is what we have always been saying. The road traffic act clearly demonstrate that. Yeah, man. <coughs> Our private motor car not being vehicle classified as commercial motor cars was constructed solely for the carriage of guests and their effect and used exclusively for personal purposes. This is why I tell us I'm a mom. Don't have a license. That vehicle was facilitated. She, she acquired that vehicle so she can move around without the hassle of the bus on these things, especially with our hip on foot problem in these things. And there was a time when me used to carry my mom all over the place, carry them at church, but pick them up from church, especially when my grandmom was here. Yeah, man. And when the police then mess around, you know, 2019, Down to my mom, become afraid for you know for travel with me in the car. All of my little church lady them where we used to, where I man used to carry. Look old lady them you know so them can't run from police. So no you know everybody is afraid of me because this agency with their agents you know always. I choose to criminalize you in some way, form, or fashion. And then choose to ignore the very rules and regulation that is on the books for themselves and their people. There's very rules and regulation here where Victor said, This is who are required to be licensed people who are engaged in commercial activity. You know what I mean? And there's a classification which specifically said private motor vehicle not being, not being vehicle classified as commercial motor cars. That was constructed solely for the carriage of guests and their effect and used exclusively for personal purposes. So my personal conveyance is just that. It has nothing to do with the state government or its agents or its agency. So when we speak, we now have a problem. I, sh I will share this information. We show no the road traffic act. We show no the very laws. We have said these are the people who re are required to be licensed. The statutory documents are all legal documents out there. It doesn't constitute law. At no point legal standard. Can be law. You have a consent to that. For your legal standard or your statute or your statutory law, your administrative law, your commercial law require consent. These things require consent, people. Yeah, man. So it's additionally vehicle used by their owners. Again, them say, I call the phone thing owner for be registered. Listen, again, your very law states that your regulation applies to people who engage in a commercial activity. It's as simple as that. The moment you're, we are outside of your commercial venue, then there is no regulations are no rules that can apply to us and that goes not just for me 
that goes for even you the basic man because the very last show you said you know have to do nothing with them and tell yourself you know them just have offer contractual service and you can reject it or you can revoke it or you can rescind it you have that free will choice and this is why I man choose to approach this thing this way yeah man so it's uh, again additionally vehicle use by their owners in pursuit of their profession or business for their personal convenience shall not be deemed to be a commercial motor car pursuant to the Road Traffic Act 1938. So right there, when people have to, I tell you about you have to have license for what? If you are, if you're a taxi driver, if you're a chauffeur getting paid, if you drive bus, minivan, and a collect passengers, or not, these are the people who are required to be licensed. You know, that's license everybody straight across the board. I object to that. So I mean, I show you your own very legal standard. I show you, sir, there is provision, there is classification for people who choose to be outside of your commercial arena. It's there. I claim common law jurisdiction. So to you, administrative adjudication examiner, I'm going to place this upon your court. I got actually go downtown and uh, Jamaica, them thing a little bit different, you know, and get a stamp duty on this specific document. Uh, this is this coincide with this police statement. Uh, the police statement is on record now. I'm going to make it and put it on record because if you notice, the police statement never have a notary public or a justice of the peace verification or certification. Didn't even have a witness. It's just his statement. Just a little constable I make a statement. A little constable I make a statement representing his senior sergeant. Because a senior sergeant is totally incompetent as a senior sergeant. This is why I not put up a statement. You are not read, you are not write. About 30 years in the force. Can you imagine the amount of error? And I totally assure respect to this senior sergeant Edwards family. I mean, know him of wife and children. So respect to the family members, but to you personally, by you personally abrogate and abridge and infringe my inherent dignity as a man. So personally, yeah, I'm not mind I ridicule you. So you dance as a rap back. You cannot read properly, you cannot write properly, and you make bad decisions. And this is why you're promoted because the Public Service Commission or Police Service Commission promote hothead illiterates such as yourself. I bet you them won't promote Constable Porter, who is an honorable man. That I mean, I know the man like that. I met the very three, did I say, police on the very same day. But according to the conduct of all three, I would salute Constable Porter and show that man respect. And I know that man come from a decent family. Whereas when you come from decent folks, you got really make an effort for a decent car. You know, won't embarrass. Not even yourself. You don't care about yourself, but you can't make your people and you know, in your community, you know, embarrass for the decent police out there, them take all of these things into consideration before them actually. They really do. So you can identify the proper 
police where you know them well brought up and all when them brought up rough, you can't see the one them where you know them one they were go school all when them are bright, but make a concerted effort for, for, for their man and be honest and do the right thing. Yeah. Them kind of police that were salute. But the criminal minded ones. The ones them would just see others and when them see them because you know look like them or you know look like your high yellow skin. You just say Sean Paul and Shaggy them type with curly curly hair. If you know look that way, them are gonna tell us a boy, you know. Them now show you no respect, them now give you no them now recognize absolutely no kind of rights that you have inherently as a man, them now go do it. It's only when them say you look like you have money. Whether you're a criminal or not, you know, you don't want to look like you can give them a little thing. Usually them don't have much neither, you know. Yeah, it look like them get up a lot of fifteen hundred dollars and three thousand dollars. But I know everybody have played that game. It's called extortion. That's what it is. And when people are choose to play that game, one of those kidnap them and then bring them through the legal process. You know what I mean? No different from the slavery what we hear about. You know, it's the very same thing, but under disguise. Human trafficking, that's what it's called. When them kidnap you and bring in of them legal system, the legal process for you, if you demonstrate that them is out, out of order, or you are fair, said boy, yo, you know, I'm not the one. Uh, usually, you know, you're innocent and them are fair prove you're guilty. But them man come and say, hey, you're innocent. You're guilty. You're guilty and I care what you do when I want you. Nothing about them innocent. But want money. That's what I'm a deal with. So I'm going to ask, you know, where is the money? But right now, you know, I demonstrate to the world, you know, say, I have a surety, recognizance is that everything. Evidence, I said, have a one hundred thousand dollar surety. And it goes two ways. So where did that one hundred thousand dollars come from, Jamaican people? And I never give them the one hundred thousand dollars. God, them said it is my own recognizance bond, and I sign as a prisoner, and I sign as the surety. So. Now, this is what I ask you, Jamaican people. What is money? How all of a sudden, a hundred thousand just manifests out of the blues and appear on a piece of paper. Where does this one hundred thousand derive from? From whom? Is it the surety? So who is the surety attached to? And what is the surety? Am I not separate and distinct from the legal entity? This legal fiction as surety? This is why we say we are, you know, living soul manifests. And I manifest as man. Yeah, man. So the persons and the personas are separate and distinct entities. From the man. Just like the man would be the vessel. But within the man. Yeah. Is that soul. That life spark. Yeah. Uh, well, that's this vessel where you are looking. Legal entity is the persona. That is the only thing these people can really interact and interface with. This is why we kind of get a bit more specific. Yeah, man. So it's, I do not consent to this unlawful 
proceedings. And I am waiving the compelled benefits. And I want it. I do not surrender any natural or common law rights in this proceeding. I do not plead the courts of contra. I also reserve all civil rights, including the right to file a statement of claim for the abridgment, abrogation, and infringement of my, my, of my inherent dignity as man freedom of movement, common and natural law rights, guaranteed by the Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedom, Constitutional Amendment 2011. And then Mr. Exhibit A, Notice of Recognizance Received, May 2nd, 2023. Exhibit D, Police Witness Statement Received, 28th of July, 2023. Then we say commercial affidavit, court verification, affirmation, duly sign and seal. Ireland and O'Neill, Dallas executor and beneficiary under my unlimited liability and commercial court proceeding in good faith, being of sound mind, having person knowledge, testify, affirm, state, and declare that the foregoing is true and correct. On this date, undersigned by the undersigned executor and beneficiary. So, Date executed and by this execution being made to appear in B. Enacted, decreed, respectfully presented. La la la, right there. So, basically, this is just a simple document for me to place upon the administrative adjudicatory proceeding. Yeah, man. The paperwork right now. So that's what you would most you know, document these things. So. You know, them outside of the scope of them authority by a mile. And all we can do is make an effort to demonstrate these things. Yeah, man. So, I bear full responsibility as that driver according to the interpretation used. In the Road Traffic Act, 1938, the driver is just a steerman behind the wheel. That's it. You know what I mean? And you know, the very act, I think, I left me to break down who is required to be licensed once you have a commercial business out there. And down, you know, in a 78, it will break down. Regulation for commercial motor cars. Yeah, man. And then it have all kind of different issues that are about the Peter White applied to and the very rules and regulations is applicable to. It can apply to I outside of that. We are demonstrate these things on the very rules and regulations, on a very legal standard. Keep it simple. Again, complete gratitude. We just have to demonstrate with knowledge out here, you know. Truly. Yeah, man, and it's, you know, so much information. More time, I like touch upon all different kind of levels still. But may have information, you know, may have peed through, you know. We have a definition of Mr. the Matrix, an organizational structure in which two or more lines of command, responsibility, or communication may run through the same individual. And then so the origin in late Middle English, and it's uh, in the sense of womb, from Latin, breeding female, later womb, from mater, mater. And then go down to mother. So matrix, you have to say synonymous with mother. If I remember the definition. So when we see the commercial foreign construct out there as it is, and we say it's a matrix, then, you know, outside of, you know, the truth when you say that, because again, 
It's an organizational structure in which two or more lines of command, two or more lines of command, two or more lines of orders. Commands or orders. Responsibility or communication may run through the same individual. An individual legally can mean a corporation or organization. It has uh, the presumptions concerning the series of transactions that comprises the birth scheme whereby government converts the birth of a child into a financial asset to underwrite the public debt and the issuance of substance void currency. Yeah, we'll make some adjustment to the intonation. Right? <clears throat> Dubbed by the unknown author, the Uniform Securitization Scheme, or USS, this universal pattern of legalization, registration, certification, securitization, and general deposit is revealed to be a blueprint for virtually every event of our lives involving government agencies, from simple purchase to the most complex banking, economic, and court transactions in particular, the metamorphosis of loan application into saleable securities. So, you know, no I make this thing too long, but never does touch upon a few things and then wrap it up. The Uniform Securitization Scheme. And it has uh, a word. In 1933, when most privately held gold was confiscated by the Federal Reserve System under Executive Order 6102, and obligations payable in gold were outlawed under HJR 192 Public Law 7310, the substance-backed economy was replaced by a substance void financial system based on credit, credit mean IOUs, which is currently failing under the weight of its own nature, and that nature is simply nothing, void, empty, promises to pay, backed by fraudulent presumption of informed consent. <laughs> It is an economy where the books always add up to zero, where the very nature of bookkeeping had to be altered to disguise the void double book entry, double book entry bookkeeping, or double entry bookkeeping. <coughs> where the notion of a single entry to explain your purchase of a pack of gum was apparently inadequate to hide the theft of your money, where every asset is also entered as an offsetting liability, where the law itself had to be replaced by commercial hypocrisy or commercial legality. With the sum total of all activity in every government licensed institution, bank, courts, and corporation equal zero every day. Where transaction which once involved the exchange of goods and services of equal value now evolve involve the exchange of securities of equal value. That means that uh, it's nothing at all. That's uh, now involve 
the exchange of securities of equal value. Nothing as the term value is defined in inferior statutory or administrative legal standard, alternatively, or rules and regulation. So value is defined as nothing. Yeah, I'm not even going to push no further. This would seem, the world seems to suffer from a conundrum of legality, or more correctly, a conundrum of frauds, wherein the concept of value is established by words on the page, instead of the perceived value of goods, services, and labor at hand. Where up is down, black is white, and timeless immorality is perfectly legal. This is why I'm a born on a legality. I'm a born on a legal system. I'm a born on a legal standard. Because it's separate and distinct from law. This is why I always say what is lawful is separate and distinct from what is legal. And what is legal is not necessarily lawful. Put the law in half for us if it's wrong or right. But with legality, you can get a license to kill, to steal, to plunder, to fleece. You can get a license to do all kind of unlawful act. But once you're licensed, then it's okay. So now, you people, I see the distinction between lawful and legal. When it's a constitutional law, that's where the lawful side is, only because it has a Bill of Rights, which is a charter of fundamental rights. And when you talk about legality, that's where the legal standard. Alternatively used are called rules or regulation. That's where that is, where it requires consent. So even when an administrative adjudication examiner is present, it's still incumbent on them to be fair and impartial. The moment you give the hint of partiality, you have to remove yourself from the case. You are disqualified. Simple. And when an examiner presents themselves, they must first express who they are, express the nature and cause of whatever action being presented. Then you can try to ascertain if one has comprehension or comprehensive understanding. We can't just treat everybody like chattel. You talk to everybody like they're asleep. And then you go home and sleep good at night. No. We will ridicule you. We will call you out. We will question your personal ability. at least sit as an umpire or a fact finder or an administrative adjudication examiner. Yeah, man. There is rule of law out there, man. But we will not specify what law are we talking about. We are there to the more size law. And the most size law is in conformity with the constitutional law. And it's outside of the legality, separate and distinct from legality. That is it. Keep it simple. Salute out there, people. Yeah, man. So where we are there, so we can touch on. Yeah, man, that is it, man.